Well, with the holidays coming up and going on right now with Thanksgiving, it's a great time that we're going to see parents. And we are want to think about the things that we might be paying attention to and, and noticing potentially in our in our aging parents. So today we are inviting Dr. David Murdy, who is a geriatrician, to come talk to us and and give us some of those ideas, um, Dr. Murdy, of as we're seeing our family. In some cases, it may be that we haven't all been together in, since before COVID. Yeah. What are the things we should kind of be keeping an eye out for? Well, I mean, many things can have changed in the time that people have been isolated. Um, frankly a lot of them have just been more depressed simply because of being isolated. So that's always a, an important thing to assess. Um, their eating, their mobility, those are very important to be assessed. Simple things like how well are they getting around? Um, do they seem to need help with more things? Potentially also more cognitive issues. You know, because of this, are they more forgetful? Um, do they misplace things? Um, are they more fearful? All of those are things that common sense evaluation can bring um, whether that's a concern that needs to be further addressed or whether it's something that can, you know, hopefully be set aside and the holidays enjoyed. If there is something that we noticed that we, we haven't noticed in 21 or in 20 or in 19, the last time that we saw parents, is there a no, no, is there something that we definitely should not do? Well, I would be careful trying to come to any conclusion right off the bat on a brief visit, mm -hmm. um, a few days. Um, part of it is that there's a lot of dislocations as people just have had to adapt to often being by themselves that we need to be aware of and perhaps not too judgmental of. But then once you've had a chance to see what's going on, it's reasonable to say, and he asks simple questions. How have you been doing? How well is this going? Um, I see this as a problem in the house or where they're at. Um, you know, how have they been doing for socialization if they are? Mm -hmm. um, and ask some simple questions and try to elicit their cooperation and your mm -hmm. concerns, whatever they happen to be. Because I think I, I like what you said about try to try to get them involved, because what happens, though, when they try to sort of downplay? Because I think that that potentially and maybe you can speak to this a little bit. I would imagine when they've started noticing some of those things or those things have been pointed out, it's probably a little bit scary for them. Well, of course, I mean, I'll worry about their independence. I'll worry about that this is a potential serious finding, whether it be something as evil as dementia or potentially another illness if there's been a significant weight loss, or frankly, even just the stigma of dealing with depression if people have been isolated for a long time without a lot of social support. So I think it's important to essentially come alongside aging parents uh, and be um, a partner with them and trying to approach what this is and not necessarily try to label with the diagnosis. Say, you have to do this. You have to make the doctor do this for you and try to bring them into the fact that you're concerned and but there are things that you can do to help the process. Um, and it may involve working with their doctor. Or sometimes it may just be involved in getting them more help for day-to-day -day things. You mentioned the diagnosis other than the, the incorrect way of going on Google and making the diagnosis yourself. Do we suggest to our parents just go to your normal doctor or do we say, oh, no, you need to go to this doctor or this doctor? Do, the, do we worry about specialized doctors right now or just say, no, let's just go to our, our family doctor? And get, a, so I, get a checkup and an evaluation. Yeah. I think the first place to start is with the doctor who knows you best mm -hmm. and work with them on what areas of concern that you might have brought. And if they're reluctant, meaning your parents, your aging parents are reluctant to pass that information along directly from them to the doctor, it is not wrong to provide collateral information in a way of a note um, to the doctor and say, hey, you know, we saw mom and dad. We noticed these things that weren't there before. Uh, we asked them to come and see you. We wanted you to know what we saw. Mm. Uh, and the doctors typically take that information in. I know I don't normally commonly re re refer to it, but I actually use that to tease out additional facts from patients mm -hmm. and family members about what this might mean and then go from there. And mm -hmm. then if they do need specialized help, then they'll probably be more likely to go and get it and cooperate with it than saying, oh, I think you have dementia and you need to see the fill in the blank type of mm -hmm. special. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I think that, and the other hard thing that we, we often hear about is, you know, people that, that their parents don't want their help or they don't think they want their help. And so how do you kind of navigate when you want to be an advocate for your parent, you want to help take care of them and, and, and make sure that they're in good, you know, in good condition, if you will. So what do you do if they don't really want your help? Well, I mean, the normal motivational interviewing process for this kind of aging patient, aging parent, 
is to point out to them the risks of not necessarily getting help, of a fall, of not you know eating properly, of, of potentially being hospitalized for an accident or for an illness, then and then facing the prospect of requiring rehabilitation and lo loss of their independence. Mm -hmm. Most people respond very favorably to saying, you know, I want to do everything I can to be as independent as I possibly can, as safe as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And most older patients will tell you they don't want to be a burden to their children. Yeah. So I think underscoring and supporting those efforts on their part are generally ways to win their cooperation. Mm -hmm. It's just a, an important time right now. Don't you agree? Thanksgiving, especially the Christmas mm -hmm. holidays, mm -hmm. because we're going to see people for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. So now is a big time for, for us, the adult children, mm -hmm. to really make sure that the parents are taken care of. Well, and, and it's also hard for the parent to realize that they may need help from their children. Mm -hmm. It is also difficult for the children to realize that they may need to help parent their parents. Mm -hmm. Both very difficult adjustments to make. And I tell people to be kind with themselves in trying to make those adjustments. Mm -hmm. But if they, they kind of focus on importance of safety, uh, respecting and, and the dignity and independence of their uh, aging parents, mm -hmm. um, and pointing out practical things that can perhaps help, mm -hmm. they a lot of times can elicit cooperation that will allow them to even get into more difficult situations if, and God forbid, they come up end of life concerns yeah. or serious diagnoses that need uh, regular care, um, the kind of things that we are concerned that people may have put off mm -hmm. during this long process of trying to get out from underneath the COVID epidemic. Yeah. So I think a lot of it is just this is one example of the many conversations that we need to get comfortable having with our aging parents. Would you agree that this is just, you know, how do we take care of them? And this is, you know, good practice over the holidays and, and just really starting to, to start that dialogue, if you will. Right. And, and, and a lot of times when people have been separated, even if they've been talking on the phone or on, on uh, you know, FaceTime or similar kinds of video chats, it's hard sometimes to communicate these more difficult issues or to see them mm -hmm. uh, when you're not necessarily in their presence and, and kind of watching them when everybody's eyes aren't on one another. Mm -hmm. uh, so I urge people to be kind about those things, but to keep track, maybe even write some notes down. Um, a lot of times the diagnosis can be much better made by that type of contemporaneous information than an office visit, even an extended office visit mm -hmm. where the patient is at their best. They dress their best. You know, they're prepared. They know they want to like, you know, make sure that they are appearing as healthy as possible for the doctor, not attract mm -hmm. unnecessary attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of times that additional information is, is key to taking care of aging parents and making sure that they're safe, independent, and happy. Yeah. And would some of that information be things like, mom, you know, is normally is dressed really nicely. And I've noticed that in visiting her, she's not bathing or she's not putting, she's not getting herself together like she normally does, or maybe the house isn't as clean, clean as it normally as is. I mean, are those things that maybe are, you know, besides the fact that I feel like they're stumbling a little bit or, or hunched over a little bit, but are those the kinds of things that you're talking about that we can share then with the doctor? Absolutely. Home safety issues are critical. And again, you may be able to detect something that is different in a serious way for them mm -hmm. that as a medical practitioner, even if we know them, we may not be able to detect because we don't normally make house calls as often as right. we used to. Right. We don't necessarily know how tidy or untidy they might have kept things. Mm -hmm. Those are the things where you can say, you know, this is not the way mom or dad normally mm -hmm. would handle this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something's yeah. not and we want to respect that intuition on your part because they're often very helpful in the diagnosis and management of aging parents. Yeah, exactly. a lot of that changes in habits and behaviors. Yeah, great tips. Yeah. Dr. Murdy, thank you so much. And it gives us a lot to look for and, and look out for our parents over the holidays. We really appreciate it. Happy to help. We want to keep everybody healthy this holiday. and the Definitely years so. Thank you. Yeah, just yeah, great things to be able to think about as we are being with our extended family and our aging parents over the holidays, just to keep your eyes open and really don't make, I, I love that. Don't make snap decisions or, you know, snap diagnosis, but at least it gives you some information to move forward. That's right. Great talking to these experts. And you've had, if you have any expert you want us to talk to, let us know parenting aging parents.